this time, right this time Take a look around, look what you did last night What you did last night, never heard a sound Yeah, I know that you told me one day you'd show That you were right this time, you were done
two tags. He is the hero. Yevne. Oh dear. Showing the back to Ambition. Oh no, he received a shot. Now he's a one shot. Oh dear. Oh dear. Yevne. Can he survive? It's the, it's the million dollar question now. Can he survive? He race. Oh my. Oh my god. Oh Oh no, he fell off, sir! He fell off, no! Oh no! Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we are back with the fifth previous guild tournament with the EU server. And we start off with Raid versus Rackham in a tense battle for the top eight. And you will see soon why it is so tense uh, tonight. Um, but before we do that, this is um, the previous guild tournament format. Just going to um, routinely talk over what it is all about because you nubs don't know what previous guild tournaments are. So it's always good to keep on reminding you what it is. You know, uh, Wargaming <laughs> didn't really um, didn't really introduce uh, previous guild tournaments in quite uh, in in informative way they've loved a video about that uh, all games are played the best of three series that is whichever team wins the first two matches will win the fixture the format is a single elimination knockout stage with a match for the third place and the tournament is seeded by the average of the win rate of the seven best players in the team a team earns a number of cups depending on where they finish and the leaderboard ranks the teams in descending order of cups. Uh, top 8 would advance to the professionals tournament and the 9th and 16th place would advance to the challengers tournament. One crucial skill tournament is spread out across two consecutive days. The first day we have at most 16 teams of one group and the top four of each group, uh, that is the semi-finalists, of each group will advance the games held on the second day. Uh, and tonight we are on the second day with at most 32 teams of one group and we only have 16 teams because there are 63 teams registered yesterday. All games are played in supremacy mode. Um, Raid has already earned at least 419 cups, they can, and they can earn as many as 2,011 cups if they win their group. Uh, if they win the final stage, uh, if they win the previous skill tournaments, and they desperately need to win this one because uh, that will put them in a good position to get into top eight. But it's but they but we will see very soon. It's not going to be enough. They have to do well in the next previous skill tournament, and. These tournaments are held from the 26th of April to the 14th of May and the professionals and challengers tournament will be held from the 19th of May to the 23rd of May. Uh, the games will start, uh, we'll actually, we only have four games, so not five, uh, begin beginning with round 16 in uh, at uh, in around 12 minutes. There is a five minute delay to prevent teams from knowing the uh, what the enemy, uh, what the other team is going to take uh, in terms of the tanks and the positions. Rekim's roster, we have Lightning McQueen as the captain of the team. We also have Pan Picula, uh, Eon, Vichetti, Pachon Crew, Mach Bas, the AF. Uh, I mean, his full name is probably Avengers previously. Val Rider, Rongho, and the 100% Bibri account Panzer Kampf Vegan. Uh, I don't think we will see that player tonight though, but you know. 100% memory account is always a thing that teams take in order to bolster their chances in the top 8 or the top 16 because that will put them high up in the seeding. That is what you want to do if you're not very confident about your chances in the top 8 or the top 16. But for Raid, they're going with Raid Blue as the captain of the team, actually. Uh, Narrow time on Anya, uh, previously known as Anya One Love, uh, OG, Yanni Tastic. Uh, Riley, Drizzle Sick, and Steel Killer. I'm not sure about Steel Killer, but that looks sus to me. Uh, this is the roster uh, for Raid. Most most of them are German, and you probably will know them um, mo uh, from 2018 Twister Cup, where where they won the entire thing, beating um, Ace Ventura. I think 4-1, if I remember correctly. Very convincing. Stuff right there. Four one or four two, I forgot. But uh, Rekia, most of them are from. I mean, some of them are from Pol. Uh, quite a lot of them are from Poland. But this is an international clan, actually. Uh, I was told that some of them, um, 
do not understand English well, so there is a translator within this team. Um, but we will see how they will communicate effectively. This is the coverage table. We will have every good names taken following the bracket of APA versus Sparta. I'll be following the bracket of Rackham versus Raid. Fujit will be following the bracket of Shadow vs Serenity and Aminette will be following the bracket of BPS vs A1M1. If we look at the table, um, currently the top 8 is Endgame Serenity BPS which is not in tonight's, uh, tonight, uh, tonight's uh, games because uh, obviously the seeding was so bad that two BPS teams went out to, uh, with, one, uh, with one another in the quarterfinals of the group stage and obviously BPS uh, already um, got drawn into two top eight teams and I think this is really really ridiculous and I really hope Wargame is going to change uh, the seeding for the summer season I think there is an urgent need for that to do so uh, I mean same goes to Loka uh, facing two top eight clans I mean if you can rate as part of one of the top eight clans, which I, I regard them as one of them, actually. Um, I mean, this is ridiculous, really. Loka facing Serenity on the first previous skills tournament. So basically, you're seeing right here two of the top eight didn't even qualify to the next day. But they are very strong clans, actually. BPS, I think they almost won one of the previous skill tournaments, and Loka at least won one of the previous skill tournaments. And for two top eight teams to face against one another uh, in, the in the group stage quarterfinals to decide on whether they can play the next day or not. I think it's uh, the seeding is not working uh, at all. And I think it would be better off to go with random seeding in group stage actually. Because you have so many teams in the group stage, I, I, think, it's, I think it's fair enough you just go with random seeding. I think that is even better than in roommate seeding. And I, I, actually, I think I think that will work for the EU server, and I think CIS server to some extent as well, because CIS server has even more teams, and the percentage of the professional teams uh, playing against one another is relatively low. Uh, I must say, uh, I mean the relative, uh, I mean I, I mean the percentage of professional teams playing in previous skill tournaments um, is really not as high as, as you say, Asia and, and the NA server. Where I think N Asia server, they, there are some teams which uses the 100% rule accounts, but you don't generally, you don't see them um, benefiting a lot from that. <laughs> For example, uh, a, lot, a lot from that. And the top 8 on the Asia server is probably one of the most accurate top 8 I've, I've seen so far across uh, all the regions. <laughs> So that being said, I think um, EU server, I think it's better off with uh, random seeding in the group stage and then you can go ahead and do win rate seeding uh, at the final stage. I think it's fair enough, we can do that. I don't think there is much problem at all. I think with the randomness, you probably would have the best clans, uh, the, the, the higher seeded clans facing, one, uh, facing the more competitive clans already in the early stage. And I think. Uh, that would deter um, some of the teams from using 100% reward accounts, in my opinion. But anyway, let's not uh, dive. Let's not digress too much on this topic. But other than that, we have A1M1, Rackham, APA, BPS, Local, BPS, and other BPS team Serenity and Endgame playing tonight in the top. Eight, uh, 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 in the top, they currently uh, only with Gravitas or the BPS without the dash uh, front in the front. Not playing tonight. Uh, Red T, um, Red T, Shadow, Sparta, Raid, and Bale are playing tonight, in, uh, but not uh, IW, Zenith, and Cash. IW losing against Vale is going to be very, very tremendous uh, for them, and especially with IW really using. Uh, I think they used 100% win rate count, and um, two of their teams didn't even qualify yesterday. One of them was a no show, so that was not good at all. But IW, um, their hopes in the top eight would be would become would, uh, would diminish. Um, after all, um, you would probably think that Raid has the higher chances in really snatching the top eight uh, in the final few uh, in the final season. But I mean, Raid they have to go past Endgame in the quarterfinals potentially, and I really hope they do that. 
and uh, we, they will prove all of us wrong with some amazing performances. Um, outside of top 16, we only have quick play tonight, so um, don't we don't I don't think top 16 is going to change much with the exception of Zenith, which I think will be in deep trouble. Um, I believe they can still uh, stay in the top 16, but the seeding is against them, and they really need to perform well in the next Proof of Skill tournament, provided that uh, the teams below them won't qualify. And you know that Kraken Esports and also Fuha has a much better seeding than Zenith, so nothing is for certain, and they have to do really well in order uh, to secure a spot in the top 16. I think uh, it also sent it with a relatively new team, so for them to already be in this at this level is pretty impressive already, so hopefully they will um, get into top 16 in the end. Um, but yeah, this is the this is the situation for you on the E server, and I think the room is up. I'm going to say hi to File Clerk and also um, Life is Hard and Amp. Hopefully, we have more people watching. Uh, we have more people watching tonight. Hopefully, we will get more than 30 viewers. Uh, 30, 30 viewers at one point. It is going to be really, really exciting, and I really hope that people can enjoy. The exciting games that will be displayed tonight. Um, it's going to be Yukon that we're going to begin first. Let's uh, uh Yukon. Yukon is a map, uh, as I said before, quite heavy oriented. Uh, the reason that is that most of the action is happening around the northeastern corner. Uh, that is the position where most of the bases are congregated. Um, the A cap is particularly a hot target for both teams on either north or south side. Uh, not not quite so for D because it's quite exposed and you don't have a lot of places to hide. But it has a lot of terrain as well. Um, you might expect some medium tanks to flank around the D region and maybe they will get a cap or maybe they will go pass through and flank directly. Um, some mediums w w work really well. We saw cats earlier today playing with double T22 mediums, flanked really well, got the tanks out, um, isolated the ice walls on C from the north spawn. So, um, Raid potentially go with double T22, so they have to work together and they can work really well. We saw it with Cats earlier today. It was the main reason why they won that game at first, and in the second game, they almost had the idea um, they just need the that T, uh, they just needed some more help from the from their team to kind of uh, to kind of uh, to kind of really. Um, make an impact on their flank. But Rackham is doing very, very, it's going very, very heavy at the moment. Um, you might expect some hull down tanks on the northeastern corner as well. There is not a lot of terrain, but there is still some terrain and some obstacles where you can do hull down nicely. So I would expect some crown wagons actually, and maybe some T125, but absolutely, IS4, uh, it's not rare to see IS4s and mouse as well. So Rackham is going for quadruple mouse, which is going to be very interesting to see. Uh, it will bring Rackham a lot of hit point pool advantage, uh, but at the same time, it's not a very close map. So they can get uh, cross, they can get under crossfire um, uh, from, from, different angles and like Dynasty's Pearl where well, it's very close and it's just a long car corridor flanked by high rises uh, high buildings um, beside uh, beside besides them so in Dynasty's Pearl you don't have to worry about getting shot from different angles but uh, on Yukon you probably will be worried about that so going for triple mouse by lightning between Pegula and Pan Chong crew. This is going to be an interesting choice. I think it could work potentially with the uh, amount of uh, hit points it provides. Uh, they provide. We also have Mach Ghosty in the Ice Four, the Aff and the T125, Wrong Ho in the T15B and Eon in the WZ World Three. Raid is going with quadruple T125 by Blue, Yanni Tastic, Naro, and Tamon, with Drizzle in the mouse and double T22 by OG and Sick. So, the first game of Yukon, this is going to be the first 
game, first uh, first game that Raid needs to uh, play well in. Uh, they, uh, they need to kickstart their form just like they did yesterday where they fed off Loka brilliantly and also they won against APA 2-0. So they want to replicate the form they had yesterday and continue it from here. And we're going to start Reckon for this Raid in a very, very exciting uh, battle for the top eight. Both teams are looking to finish in the top eight, and particularly for Raid, they do not want to finish outside of top eight for two consecutive seasons. And really, they got very unlucky in the in two of the previous Q tournaments where they faced off two top eight clans. So they really, really want to make use of this opportunity to really further the uh, further uh, further their chances in the top eight, at least. Good showing tonight would be of paramount importance. Rekka Red Team, North Spawn going mostly to A, with Blue Team Raid um, also going to around the A spawn. A side, I mean. Tamon is going for C, so it's probably going to get some hip uh, cap lead for Raid, with Drizzle coming in shortly on C as well. On the other hand, Sick is in that medium tank. I think he shot something, or is it not? Oh, but Raid getting a really aggressive move over to the corner, but they're only free. T1 10 e so they just need to finish off EO quickly though, but they are hor they are outnumbered, obviously. Redgun needs to make use of the opportunity to shut down those T1 10 e and I think Raid might have dropped the reactive armor at two uh, at, the, at, uh, at a premature time, I'm not sure. Um, Raid needs to get a focus fire right, they need to focus down uh, Mark Bass at the moment, but Pigula is so, so healthy. But Mark Bass is on fire, that is going to be a crucial fire, that is. But Blue is also dead. Narrow also quite low, but Yali Tastic is still very, very healthy. Yes, hello Kuka. Mark Bass is now dead. Narrow is now dead. With Tamon also very, very low. I think that I think Raid that wasn't a very good push right there. Three tanks against like six or seven tanks of Rackham. That is pro that is not some good calculation right there, but the AF is going to go down very, very soon. It's still five for this four for Rackham. Rackham looks very strong at the moment, and the AF is now down. And it's now 4 versus 4. The Triple Mao is still alive. But anything could happen at this point. Lightly McQueen is going to be the focus potentially. I think they want to take out Rongho at the, uh, uh, for now. Because Rongho has a lot of... Uh, Rongho has a lot of DPM on the board. But Yanni Tarsic is now dead. It's now 3 versus 3. OG I think is now getting out of this. With Rongho now dead. Um, Wreck of Triple Mouse. The DPM is going to go against their favor. Drizzle dropping the adrenaline. He is still alive, but not by long, not for long. He he wants to finish off Lightning McQueen. a one shot, but he got killed by uh um, by Lightning McQueen. OG and Sick, both T20 still left on the battlefield. They will possess a lot of DPM and also mobility, but Sick might be trapped. He needs to run away from this Quagmire as soon as possible for Rackham. Uh, the mouses are coming in to shut down Sake. Pecula is looking to put a shell into Sake. He can put a shell into Sake, but he just went, uh, just got out of this just in time. I don't know if it's just in time because Patron Crew is looking to put a shell into Sake. Great shell right there. Pecula puts a good shell into Sake, leaving Sick, uh, the um, a one shot potentially. It's too really close to call, but Raid with three caps and their mobility. Wreckham with three mouses. I have no idea what is going to happen. <laughs> Gosh, this is really, really tight. And I think Raid would just need to uh, preserve the hit points. I mean, they had like half the hit points of Wreckham. But Pachong Crew misses that shell. Very important shell missed onto OG. Pachong Crew is going to get C. The caps, I don't know. Sick is looking to defend D. But I think let's look at OG at this moment here. I think he wants to get Lightning McQueen out of this game. Will he be able to spot up to Lightning McQueen though? I don't know. 827 hey I think OG needs to get a cap, but that will give information to mouse to the mouses. I think that will give them information. Pigula is going for a D, but Lightning McQueen is going for A. But OG did the right move to get out of A. But I don't know, Pigula is going for D. With Sick. 
I, I don't know. Sick just abandoned. Uh, oh no! Pigula! Not quick enough to turn his turret. Oh my goodness me. Pigula might be able to get the. And that would put a cap stop. Oh, Sick is dead! Oh my goodness me, this is. Uh, this is uh, difficult to watch. OG's traversing through the mouses. Patron crew dropping the adrenaline. But OG kills off um, Lightning McQueen. D is also getting captured though. Oh my goodness me. OG, can he get B? Or is he going to get out of B? Patron crew is looking to land the shell into B. Into OG, I mean. Oh dear. Oh dear. I don't know what's going on. The mouses are closing in. Raccoon might be able to get the caps just in time. And Pachon Crew is looking to ram into OG. No, he stopped with Pen Higula killing off OG. He made me sick. They did the defend D. That, that was so costly. Raccoon at one point was, was down by quite a lot of cap points. My goodness me. Um, I think Ray, the Triple T 125s, uh, did it. I think it was too early of a rush right there. And they dropped the reactive armor way too early. Uh, I mean, at that moment, Racket wasn't even rushing those T125s. So that really made them, uh, made that uh, use of consumables quite useless, to be honest with you. But the mouses, Triple Mouses, the top three mo uh, most damaged for Racket. Pretty important, I must say. But raid, I think they they got a, they got a little bit too aggressive right there. If they kind of you know held their ground a little bit, maybe, uh, and allowed the tanks near C to kind of to kind of um get closer to T125s, so I I think that wouldn't have ended in a disaster. Uh, I think raid would need to reconsider their approach right there. It wasn't the best uh, move from raid right here, but Rackham. The triple mouse definitely the amount of hit points and the armor they possess is a game changer basically um so as uh, as the nami uh said it uh, rightfully mouses they they take quite a long time to take out and i and uh and you and it's also quite uh heavily armored tank but it has a relatively poor gun uh very low penetration and dpm so you pretty much the mouses is uh, the mouses are used for for uh for dealing with uh push um to say um to say the least to so with raccoon getting the match point getting a little bit bogged out with the game, not sure. My game froze. I think. Yeah, and it crashed. So hopefully, I will. Uh, I'm going to load the game once again. My game crashed. <laughs> So, Rackham, this time on the south spawn, raid on the north spawn, raid, double bounce by Drizzle and OG, T22 by Sick, Triple T125 by Yoni Tastic, Blue and Tamon, uh, a Chinese TD by Daro, with uh, Rackham going with IS4 uh, for Lightning McQueen, Ron Ho Kram, Varg in double bounce by Pekula and Eon, and we also have Bass by T20, uh, in T22, Pachong Crew and Av in double T125. Uh, Ray this time won't have cap lead because Rackham got to C. A is going to be captured by Raid, but D is going to be captured shortly by the Yaf. No one is going to reset the Yaf. It's going to be this time Raid that needs to make a rotation. Um, Rackham is calling for attention on Sector 7. Mouse and Mice. I think Mice is pretty much uh, an, an an official plural form of mouse. 
I mean, if it's his mouse, then yes, it's it, that is the plural form of mouse. But mouse is a different. It's tank. It's not a. It's not an animal. <laughs> so it's kind of different here. Vracum. It's just they should need to defend. They have cat bleed. They need to make sure uh, Ray won't be getting either C or D. But they are completely abandoning D. Though it would be good, it might be there to get some shots onto D, so I'm not sure what's Raid going to do. But they need to get the information there. Oh, Yanni, oh. Rackham might be looking to make a push onto D. Saying so that would that would translate into Raid needing to make a move on the other side, but it's double mouses on the other side. Yanni Tastic needs to run. And I'm not sure about the. I'm not sure if he could run as soon as possible. He got tracked once, so unfortunately, raid. They need to kill off the mouses as soon as possible. Think. Wrecker will have the advantage here. Yanni Tastic is going to go down. He's dropped the reactor farm. But it's actually Eon that uh, that is dead first. Pigula is going to be half of his damage, uh, of his extra hit points right now. Blue bounces onto Pigula. That's not an uh, idea, but Yanni Tastic is finally dead. But how long did it take for Rackham to kill that T125? One T125 actually, Pikuna now dead. Double Mouses is uh, already taken already taken out by Raid. But Rackham only took out Yonni is hosting the T125, so Raid definitely acted more quickly and was a lot more effective in killing off those mouses here. Narrow! In that, uh, in that Chinese TD also did some damage to support Yanni Tastic, as we say. So that is also very important as well. So this time, Raid responded a lot better than before with uh, Lightning McQueen taking some hits. The Patrol Cruiser now one shot. It's still uh, Raid's advantage and hit points. It's, it's in total favor of Raid at this moment in time. Lightning McQueen. It's receiving some a uh, pressure. Mark Mars gets hit by Drizzle. And it's now 800 cap points for Raid here. Tamon's look is full health. Looking to put a shot into Ronho, but it did not connect. And it's a bounce for sake. Actually, got a, sh a hit right there. Rackham, will they do an unlikely comeback here? I don't think it's possible, but you would never know. You might see an ammo rack just right around the corner. Tam and I'm, uh, I'm talking to you especially. Hopefully he doesn't get ammo racked, obviously. But Bowser is now dead. Sick is now dead. It's now 3 versus uh, 2 versus 5, actually, for Rekum. This is a lot more dominant performance by Raid here. Ronho is now one shot. Driss is coming in to shut him down. But the AF will be left hopeless, trying to kill to fend off all the Raid's forces here. And it's obviously Raid's game, this is. Um, will anyone be able to kill off the Yaf? OG kills off the Yaf! So at least Raid will get all seven tanks. But now we are going into a tiebreaker. Wreckham versus Raid, 1-1. One, one. And Raid, this is a much, much better performance by Raid. Uh, Wreckham, I think, um, that push, I think was a good idea. But, but they spent way too long and killing the and killing Yoni Tastic, but I don't think that was the big the biggest problem right here. Um, the the mouses. How on earth did they lose so many hit points? And I, I don't say they are working together well. Uh, and because I mean, Rackham, they were rushing to one side. So theoretically, those mouses should be to should be there to absorb the rush. Um, they didn't really do that though. So that left uh, Raid with quite an advantage to soak up. So you're seeing Raid, 6 tanks to more than 2k, and Rackham only 2 tanks to more than 2k, so fantastic job by Raid and Rackham. Um, they need to find their spark once again, uh, and the first game was very good, the second game, hopefully, uh, the defending forces would do better. Um, now we are now into Winter by Novka. According to Fuji, is Raid's most uh, hated map, so I'm not sure if it's the if it's the case for Raid, but um, yeah, unless you use gold on mouse cheeks, and it's tournaments, so everyone is using gold. No excuses for teams not to use gold. And if you cry about getting 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 shot by premium uh, ammunition, then you probably have no idea how tournaments work. <laughs> uh, the, the amount of gold ammunition you're going to use, it's really quite minimal. Um, it's really like it's, it's quite it's it's quite minimal and not it's much much um, less of an impact compared to 
Raid's interest in, uh, in uh, both teams' interest in the top eight. So I would say, really, they do not want to be stingy about their kill and ammunition right here. Went to my north coast, so quite a big map. Um, the mediums and lights will have to do a tremendous job with this one. And this is what Rackham's going to take with wrong hold of Vickers Light at the R in the T22. Double VK 19.01P by Eon and Mark Baus, Triple T125 by McQueen, Patrol Crew and Pigula. Hello, Tyler, as well. Raid is going mostly to A. Oh, some shots. Oh, Reg, sick. Took a hit. But this is not going to affect a lot for Raid because they need that corner. You know, sake spotting up those tanks crossing. Lightning McQueen, we get a, ma a lot of shots from Raid here. He got, he's now down to 1,400 and Raid is coming in to support uh, Sick right here. Lightning McQueen's taking more hits right here, but I think there is another um, move over to those VK 90.01 piece by the mouses here. Uh, Raid. Oh, Lightning McQueen's dead already! And Le Raid is now 7 for the 6. They have a substantial point pool lead, but Reckon can absolutely support a party if Raid cannot focus fire. Pico is coming here, coming in at, in front of Patron Crew. Patron Crew is, is tracked, however, he does not have any more repair kits. And he's forced into this position. He's he stopped in this position basically, and he's killed. It's now seven versus five. Raids looking very very strong at the moment. He goes now one shot. Tamers is looking to finish him off, and he does with the Yaf looking to be killed by Raids forces five versus one. Even the best player, even Uthbi Josh, cannot kill off kill all five tanks there. And Rekum actually coming out on top. And this is what bounces. What are you doing, Drizzle? What are you doing? <laughs> But anyway, it's not that much of an importance because five tanks, those five tanks on the other side have done a tremendous job right there. I think OG is just going to run away because he can't do one versus two right there. And Ovid for the win, who is, uh, uh, oh yeah, Ovid, um, which is Raid Blue, I think. Indeed, um, I think Raid Blue would be very, very smug about that performance. Very strong performance, and the sick is looking to, you know, <laughs> wrong or really asking for mercy. Uh, in this situation, they really, um, and they really are bowing down to raids, aggression and ruthless ruthlessness. Raid simply, it's too much uh, of wrecking to bear, and I really think they are looking strong. They're going to mount a challenge to whoever comes into the quarterfinals, presumably EG. That is, hello, Bow. What are you doing? And it's raid. If a uh, strong, commanding finish right there, very quick game it is. And it's going to be 5 tanks doing more than 2k for Raid. I reckon only 2 tanks doing more than 2k. And I think Sick, despite taking a hit at the start, his spot onto the tanks, Reckham's tanks crossing into uh, crossing and getting the corner, uh, that made that difference for for Raid. Basically, you know, Lightning McQueen got heavily smacked while crossing with Pachon Crew, perma tracked. This is not the start that Rackham would be would be looking forward to. <laughs> so basically, Ray did a tremendous job um, in this one, and I think this is down to uh, um, down to really the experience and the strategic sense as well. So well done to Raid and they are through to the quarterfinals. Rackham will be out uh, for tonight, um, and they will be very very dangerously holding on to that uh, eighth. Position on the leaderboard. Let's see the results of other uh, round 16 uh, games. Oh. Okay, so APA versus Sparta. They are still playing, so Sparta could potentially win against APA with Red T. Uh, winning against Quick 2 0. They're still waiting for their opponents. Um, on the other hand, we have Endgame versus Rek T, and it's going to be Endgame 2 0 against uh, the second team of Rek T. Um, meanwhile, we have Loka, uh, we, we have Shadow versus Serenity, and it's going to be Serenity 2 0 against Shadow, and they will face Loka, um, which beats KV4. Um, I think, two, I presume, 2 0 that is. 
Um, I'll say beat KB4 two one actually, so it's a close game. Uh, not uh, it's close game. KB4 did well, I must say. Uh, and we have Vale. Where are you? Vale are through. Uh, two 0 against Cash, and they will be facing A one M one who have beaten BPS. Well, this is going to be interesting because BPS really wanted a strong uh, performance tonight. Losing against A1M1, 0 2 isn't uh, the result they are hoping for. Uh, in particular, uh, BPS are not very, very safe in the top 8 at the moment. Uh, already, they got pegged uh, to top 8 teams already. Um, in the previous Q2 tournaments, you can't, I cannot guarantee they won't get pegged against another top 8 team. And their top 8 hopes are on the ropes here. Um, we will see once again APA versus Sparta still playing at the moment. Ooh, um, here we go Raid versus Endgame next, Serenity versus Loka, Veil versus A1N1. The leaderboard we will have um, Endgame through, uh, Raid through, Serenity are through, BPS are out. Um, Loka are through and uh, APA are still playing and Vale are in with Red Sea in as well. Shadow are out. Rackham are, are out. Sparta still playing. Quick are out. KB4 are out. Uh, Cash is out. Uh, A1N1 is through so well done to them. Leaderboard will look like this at the moment. BPS will not overtake the other BPS team, so they will finish in the fifth place. But they are very, very close uh, out of top eight. You know, they're down. Uh, they, they only have one thousand cups of difference. So, uh, so if they do not qualify uh, to the next day of the uh, of the sixth previous huge tournaments, they are out of top eight basically. Um, Red T are not there quite there yet. They're still around 400 cups away from Wreckham, so anything can still happen uh, here. Um, Okay, so on the other hand, Raid is now into the 12th position, into the 12th spot. They win against Endgame, they will overtake Shadow, and so it does Veil here. And um, this is going to be exciting. Once again, let's check the results of APA versus Sparta, and they've beaten Sparta 2 1, so they are still relatively safe in the top 8. Commiserations to Sparta, but I think that I think they are very safe in the top 16 So I do not think they will be overtaken by any any team below them. So I think Sparta uh, Will be would now be preparing for life in the uh, challenges tournament And that would mean APA Will be in the sixth place with 28,058 cups. Well, this is going to be a very very tense top 8 battle indeed. So here we go. Here we have a chunk crew with me from Matt Krim. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great despite the alright, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna even try to call it. <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah, you guys have a really good first game there. I mean, against Ray, that was a uh, very good respawns, but then, I mean, <laughs> I mean, let's not talk about what happened there after. But I mean, you, I mean, at the moment, you're still in the top eight, so I think you should be proud of that. And also, um, 
how do you rate uh, your team's performance so far this season? I thought that after a actual long period of playing, mm -hmm. uh, you can start to understand some kind of tactical basics, but mm -hmm. it's not thing that you can achieve in one season, I believe. And you can like straight see it right there. Like the second game was kind of funny because everyone wanted to push because it worked versus EG. And I was telling them, don't, don't push, don't push. And they still did it. It was funny. Like, I'm not going <laughs> to even talk about it because it makes like no point to, it was such an idiotic move, but still. Well, I mean, you kind of surprised Raid right there, but I mean, think I, I, mean, I don't, they I don't, surprised I just, me. we surprised ourselves, I believe, because like, <laughs> that was far from what I would call, but everyone wanted that. So. They pushed into into defense, into crossfire, they just died. Like. Well, I mean, it's not really the case apart from the mouses, though. I mean, the other five tags tried really hard to kill off Yalitase, who dropped the reactor farm at the right time. I mean, um, <laughs> but I mean, you know, I mean, you never know. It could have work, uh, worked for you guys if uh, Ray didn't really kill off your mouses. It would never that have quickly. worked. Like, it was not even uh, a response. They were just sitting in their defensive position and we tried to push it. Like, it was. No, it's like not even worth to talk about in my mind, like... Oh, I see. But I mean that is the same for Raid's first game. Let's be honest here. <laughs> well, Raid actually had a plan to... They wanted to challenge us into the corner, but they, they just had one tank out of the game and that was kinda... kinda bad well, for mean... them, but... Yeah. And the fact that we had heavy tanks and they just... They were like constantly farming damage, all of them. But they had good plan and... In the second game, we should not even try to push. We had points, we had everything. I mean, true. The crowd, true. Wanted, crowd, crowd wanted it, so we did it. <laughs> I see. What happened, everyone could, could see that, yeah. I, I mean, mean I, I wouldn't necessarily say that was a bad idea, but I mean, it could have been... A terrible quite... idea, yeah. You cannot say it, it was bad, it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, would, I would say it just need a lot more polishing. Uh, that is my comment on that push. <laughs> I would say if it would get some more brain, then it would never happen. It would never have happened, you know? It was. It would be uh, like, I maybe repeat that. Uh, I, mean... I see. But look, actually, let's not talk about that much. Uh, but looking forward, um, assuming that you will be in the top 8, so what will be your expectations for your team in the professionals tournament then? I hope they're going to achieve the best. Uh, I decided to quit the team because like I'm not going to frustrate anymore. You know, it's like for me it was maybe not a hard decision but I need to focus on the school right now. I, I need see. To get my bachelor degrees and I just don't mm. have really time to invest. Achoo. I hope the guys will will reach as high as they possibly can and I wish I them the so. best. Oh, I hope so too. I mean rack bits. A team to watch. I mean, they were quite good in Blitz Premier Cup, so I really hope that they could improve the season at uh, this uh, this year, and maybe they could uh, become one of the newer forces in the Cloud Wars. So all the best to you guys. You know, you know what happened. It's like <laughs> the Reckon team is pretty much the soul, soul, soul. Yeah, day. I know, I know. But you, you guys have some people. Players? Yeah, you guys have some people from. I mean. It's well, like recommend one, service, but most one person so. from the old Reckon clan. <laughs> ah, I see. <laughs> but That's well, I mean, weird yeah, story, yeah. but still, I mean, I, I had fun while it lasted. But I'm just like, I don't have time to invest, and frustrating is not a good way to live the life. I believe. True, but uh, yeah, but other than that, uh, I'll just wish you all the best. Um, and I have to go back to commentating. So see you then. Yeah, thank you, and see you. Thank you. Bye. Uh, that was Pam Chong Crew in that voice chat, uh, voice chat um, talking about Reckham's performance. Uh, they weren't particularly happy about that push, though. Uh, but they, uh, but they're looking forward uh, to try their best in the professionals tournament. I hope they do. Uh, otherwise, by being the top eight in the first place, then uh, then we are seeing Cam Steer for both Ray and Endgame. This is massive. Let's change the. Let's change. Uh, let's change it. And 
Before I continue talking, I'm just going to edit, 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 edit the, edit the graphics on the other scene. So don't mind me of some minutes of silence here. We are now on to the quarterfinals. We're going to go with Camp Steer. Um, the reason why it's called Camp Steer because it's one of the only maps, and I believe it's the only map where you can reset all three spawns from both sides. <laughs> Um, this is sometimes why Camp Steer uh, games can use up all 7 minutes because basically both teams cannot even get a cap. <laughs> and uh, and that, could usually, that usually translates into a very, very dull and boring match. Particularly for us, stre for us streamers and also viewers, that is not something that we want to see. Both teams holding on, uh, not allowing anyone to get a cap. <laughs> Uh, not something that uh, anyone would uh, want to see. Like, seven minutes of stalemate. And uh, we're we are not here for that though, so hopefully both teams are going to uh, t uh, live uh, and lift things up and give us some very exciting stuff. And here we go. Raid. Triple T 125s by Yonis Hostic Blue and Drizzle, STB 1s by OG, Tamon Naru in Double Crab Bag, and Sick in that Gorilla here. Um, Gorilla has good DPM and good fear factor with the gun having around 640 alpha damage. Problem is, the camo is bad. So we can get Sporter from a very far position, and STB 1 will be played by our love Susie Bay actually. Um, STB1 has good depression and good turret armor, so but it has bad um, DPM and the mobility is not the best as well. Uh, end game going with Radicos in the Ice War as well. Carol in Kron. Ooh, the T125 is crossing very uh, uh, crossing into the buildings here. Great, um, great shots into Winchelate here. I think Winchelate uh, didn't expect that to happen, and the T125s are not. Uh, uh, it's really good. Oh, blue. Uh, a little bit careless, but it's minimal, not a lot of damage getting sh uh, shredded away, but you know, uh, it's not the best idea to lose hit points at this point. Uh, Triple T one twenty five by last AFK, Romka and Object 3, Winchelade and that Vickers Light actually. Raid is very separated, but this is to be expected on Camp Steer though, because Raid is looking to reset all three caps, and uh, the, you, you can see from this lineup, they are not giving any uh, chances for an endgame to get into either cap. But Endgame on the other hand is not giving chances on Raid and trying to get a cap here, so... Um, I, I'm afraid to say though, um, anyone watching this stream, be prepared to endure a 7 minutes, a 7 minutes of stalemate right here. So while we are, while we are living in this stalemate situation, Raid is dropping some hit points. Not something that they would be happy about. And Endgame would be trying to make a push on Yoni Tostic and OG. I think that could be a good idea here because there are only two tanks and Endgame could outnumber them quite easily. On the other hand, Tamon in that Crumb Wagon in a very far away position, but look at Naro. Coming into support, OG and Yoni Tostic, I think they have a sixth sense right there. The sense, uh, that's good sensing right here. Ooh, um... Radicals dropping hit points is going to attempt to capture A a bit, but no, doesn't he's doing that. Drizzle and also um, 
Blue is trying to push out onto Object 3 here. I think action is happening. We are not going to see Selmic gameplay. Radicosa is trying to get out of this um, quagmire with Yanni Tastic putting a good shell here. OG, I don't think he's able to put a, sh a finishing shell. Um, but this is really close to call. Darrow would want to reload his clip though, but at the on the other hand, Blue and Drizzle is looking to shut down Object 3. He's dropping Reactive Armor. That's going to be ported, but one for this two. Can Object 3 survive though? I'm not sure. But you have Winchelade sniping from behind. Carolade coming out on uh, uh, coming up uh, coming through this um uh, berm right here. Let's take raid. I'm not sure about these uh, double T-125C. It's now going to be two for those two. Carolay coming in to shut down these two T-125s. It's going to be a turning point for the end game, I would say. The focus for the end game, they're focusing Raid Blue at this point. And Blue is now killed with last AFK trying to go for um, Taman here. One for this one. These kind of brawls be very, very important to end game success here. This is still really close, but I love Susie Bay. will be looking to drop uh, off this. Uh, situation because he's dropping reactive armor and he's a medium tank. He does not want to get shot uh, as well. And with double T125 now killed a bit, I think a bit too ambitious right here. I think Terman is going to go down sooner or later. Great shot into last AFK by Sick on top of here. We just missed that actually. Terman's now killed. It's now four for the six. Hit points are in favor of Endgame right now. But you never know about that gorilla right here. He spotted. Endgame knows this. Raid still doesn't have a cap at the moment. And they are down in caps. This is very this is very important stuff. OG barely is a barely able to get on to, uh, uh, to get to crawl to get on top of that. Sick. Don't know. This is really, really tight, really, really tense. And OG's going for A. I love Susie Bay is going to go in. But Sick is not in position to shut down I Love Susie Bay. With Yone Tastic taking more hits though. Why? Well, I don't know what I Love Susie Bay is doing. He's allowing OG to cap that base. Sick misses that shell. Very important shell missed there. OG is looking to shut down I Love Susie Bay. He's now on one shot here. I, OG cannot fluff that shell. He needs to get that shell in. OG is going to kill with I Love Susie Bay. Important kill right there. But, but Sick once again misses the shell. Oh no. Let's head down to Sick at the moment. He's need to kill, he needs to kill off Winchelay. He just um, he just got into a beauty to shield himself. But hit points are in favor of uh, Endgame at this moment. Last AFK is looking to chase off OG. I think OG cannot get a little bit... Uh, needs to play this one carefully. I think that was a good show right here from Sick. Let's just follow Sick for a moment. Oh dear. Oh dear. Can he survive? Great shot into Romka. But Winchel will be looking to put a good shell into Sek right here. And Sek will be looking to put a shell into Romka. Great shell there, but can he survive? He's going into the carcass, but no. Not uh, not enough right here. We only have 1 minute and 30 seconds remaining. Oh dear. OG dropped down the river. And last AFK is coming f to kill off OG. And he kills off OG. Le it leaves only 2 tanks left remaining on the battlefield. Absolutely, last, last AFK can stop the caps. 380. Is it going to be enough? Not enough here. Raid still has the hit point pool advantage. Narrow barely hanging on in, in, in this in this in this terrain here. One minute left, and Narrow cannot cannot die. Carol is looking to put a shell into Narrow, and he did. I think he. I think Yannis was not able. To kill him off, actually, well, uh, wasn't able to shield him off. Actually, Yane Tasix left, and he got his gun up, and it's going to be end game's first game, right here. Very, very tanks game indeed. But I think everything gone south when Double T's 125 tried to brawl against Object Three. I think that was a little bit too ambitious. Without the help of Tamman, this is not going to. It's good. This is a very very ambitious move, especially Endgame, very, very strong individually. And uh, Ray really suffered from that, actually. And they forced themselves into a situation where they have to outclass Endgame in terms of skills. And you know, Endgame has the best players on this, in the server. And this is not going to happen, sadly. So this is going to be uh, Endgame 1-0 to Raid. Oh dear. This is still really tense. Um, I 
I don't know what's going to happen. God bless. <laughs> Pachon, Pachon crew just said to me that he got uh, he got persuaded to go back to Reckham. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and you know, he has a soft heart, so he's going coming back. So he's not going to um, leave Reckham for now. <laughs> a raid. This is a game that is going to decide their fate pretty much in top 8. If they cannot win against Endgame, their hopes of top 8 will be pretty much over. I have to say, Endgame is a very, very strong clan. And I do not think they will uh, grant any opportunity for Raid to make, a, to make a comeback here. They are a very, very ruthless team, even though they are first in the leaderboard. But you know, they cannot purposely throw, throw a game for Raid because it's against the rules. And you can get banned for this because it can be considered match fixing. In, uh, in this in, in this in this contest, so Endgame's not going to do that. Obviously, they don't want to get themselves banned, and it's going to be Raid versus Endgame. Back with Camsty and Raid on the south side. Uh, red team, blue team will be Endgame on the north side. Looking at the lineup, we have Sick in the AMX 50B, Drizzle in the i7, Double Crown by Blue and Arrow, OG STB1, Double T125 by Yanni Tastic and Taman. Uh, Endgame on the other hand, Double 50 Beast by Winchelade, I Love Zizzy Bay, and Double Crown Bargain by Carolade and Radicosa with Ronka and Object 3. Double T125, last AFK in the Vekka Slide. It's all or nothing for Ray at this point. I think they have to do the Mission Impossible, and I believe they could, but it's going to be a very, very steep hill to climb at this point in this moment in time. Rex sake. It's looking to get resets on C's. In position, blue spotted. Um, Carol A is spotted as well. OG is looking to get in position to reset A here. Uh, Endgame, are they lining up for a push over to C though? I don't think it will happen because they got spotted. But Ray, absolutely. They cannot drop unnecessary hit points. Blue drops some hit points there. They're still a really close call. Oh dear. Sorry about that. Yeah, you're now seeing this game. I just discovered just in time, just so you can see the matches. So it didn't miss much. Don't worry about that. <laughs> uh, back with uh, uh, Wild Ones Helper uh, messing up with scenes, but uh, not by much. <laughs> the Double Crab Vargans, okay, hit them a little bit. It's not uh, something that Ray would be proud of, actually. Please tell me, uh, it's the right scene for the last game. <laughs> and I'll be happy about that. So, this is going to be a stalemate gameplay. Uh, Endgame has actually rotated to way. Um, Object's trying his hand on A. OG is going to come into this bush. But I think he won't be happy about what's going to happen next. He's going to reset Object 3. Well done to him, but look at Romka. Dropping the speed boost. He is looking for the head of OG. OG, can he survive for long enough? I don't know. Great track shot right there. Oh, he got tracked as well. He's dropping down. He manages to drop down. But that will hand Endgame the A cap. Yanni Tastic um, is in a very weird position right now. But Raid, I don't think this is not good. I think Raid... Oh dear, oh dear. This is what I'm saying about Cam Steer. It's very, very stale indeed. But Raid are not in position to stop the end game's push right here, and they're still not uh, leading in terms of hit points. Oh, Hard Vargas are dropping more and more hit points. This is looking more and more like uh, uh, end game's game here. Crumb Vargas need to rotate out of this position. It's they are out of position a sec. Oh dear, I don't know if he will get eviscerated. Getting out, he didn't. Lucky him. He could have he could have been much worse. And he just got shot once actually. Ray is dropping more and more hit points. They do not have to hit point put advantage and Ray they they have they are left with no choice but to find a p place to rush and maybe they need to get hold of A. But they had to do it uh, as soon as possible because Endgame, they have four tanks. Uh, th th their tanks are very isolated. 
Same thing raid is now with the crown bargains dropping the dropping the speed boost. Angie is looking to line up the crossfire. Great shot into Tamon. And potentially a raid will be down by more than 3k of hit points. And in the next minute, it's going to decide whether raid still has a chance in the top eight or not. Eventually going to be I think raid. They're left with little choice but to make a push sooner or later. They have to take a deep breath. They need to make a move. If they don't, they're going to lose. And I really, really hope that is going to happen. This is going to happen sooner or later. Raid is dropping into A. Last AFK. It's there to reset A. But that would not give Endgame uh, Raid the hit point, the, the the cap advantage right here. Drizzle takes a hit from it. Last AFK, but uh, the arrow is dead. Ooh, and that crowd bargain right here. Didn't catch that, but great assassination by Endgame. <laughs> this is snowballing for Raid at this moment in time. I have no idea how Raid is going to win this one. They're down by one tank. They're down in hit points by quite a lot. Down in caps by quite a big amount as well. Raid. They they hope they would need to hope for a miracle to happen and it's somewhere, but this is definitely going to be end games end games game with Radicoso getting hit there, um, Tavern getting hit there as well. Sick getting double tapped. This is truly over for Raid now. I don't think they will be able to make a comeback here. The only task now taking more hits though. I think this is uh, Raid. I think the positioning was quite questionable here. Um, Saying uh, the double cram bargains, um, I don't know about these positions, but uh, but but maybe it's not. I think it's a quite a common position for teams to take on the south side, but simply Angin was brilliant in shutting those cram bargains down, and that is a very strong performance by Angin indeed. Um, Romka's lucky shut down Drizzle, and he did track shot into Tamon, and really, this is. End games game. Raid are out of the quarterfinals, and end game is now picking up the pieces. And uh, Tamon will be down in no time. And he's down. With Blue the last man standing, puts a good shell into I love to see Bayer. You know. Winchelay killing off Blue, sealing end games uh end games uh burst in the Semi-finals, Raid are out, and the top eight hopes are pretty much over at this point. You're seeing here, Raid, two tanks to more than 3k, and game four tanks to more than 2k. Oh my goodness me, hello Mitzi 69 Oh my goodness me, how, what, oh my god, I didn't expect you to show up. Oh my god, thank you. Um, I hope you're the real Mitzi. <laughs> But if it's the real you, then oh my god, thank you very much for showing your support. But Bern Bernard, yes. <laughs> I'm not tired. What do you think? I'm not tired at all. <laughs> but I'm very much tired by teams playing on Camp Steel, you know. When, when the next map is Camp Steel, you need a lot of energy. <laughs> Gosh. Okay, semi finals. Vale got a spot as well. They won against uh, A1N1 2 0. So well done to Vale. Wow. Maybe it's actually Vale that is going to get top 8 in the end. Actually. Surprises, surprises. <laughs> uh, Serenity versus Loco. It's going into tiebreaker, I presume. Oh, Serenity won 2-0 against Loka. Well done to Serenity. That will further the chances into the top 8. Loka is not safe yet, actually. And if they um, mess up in the final previous good tournament, which they got picked against Serenity at the start, uh, the first previous good tournament, they do not want to... Uh, they did not want to be knocked out on the final day, you know. Uh, On the other hand, Recti against APA. Still, still, still playing. Oh, Shockley coming here to clarify things up. Oh, Stain. Oh, dear. 
for you. Um, but we are waiting for the next opponent, APA versus Red T. So. Uh, very very quick uh, very very soon we have blue and also Daro from Ray joining us in the, the interview Right, hello blue. Um let me move you. In. Hello blue. We're waiting for Naro as well. I think I'm gonna send him a hey. DM. Or oh, did you send him a DM already? Have you sent him a DM already? Or do I what is it? I'll tell him. Hello. Hello. Uh, hello. Yeah, hit the join. You can move him to oh, us. Great, great, great. Hello both of you. Uh Hey, he's I, not I, an I, I voice, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you could see this channel, but anyway. Hello to both Naro and Blue, how are you doing? Oh, we're good, and good. you? Uh, great as well. Um, very, very sad to see you getting knocked out by Endgame. But I think uh, some good performance is again Raptor, but uh, I, I think uh, this has been quite a difficult season for you. But so, but But then, how do you think about your team's performance so far this season? Would you like to go first, or should I go first? <laughs> I don't care. Because I can say something. Um, yeah, first of all, I think our team is um, in a good matter of uh, skill uh, and ha having good skill and etc. We have a lot of uh, problems in the team also with pending mm -hmm. shots or sometimes we have uh, bad seedings that we are getting second round against Endgame or Loka which are also great uh, CV teams, so that it can mm -hmm. win against us. That's sometimes the problem is to get to the next stage. Mm. Otherwise, we see an interesting top 8 so far, because mostly there are teams which aren't in the top 8 last season, or teams which are getting a new team leader or getting new created by a new clan, etc. Also, we see old clans which are getting reformed, like uh, one N1, which was mm -hmm. Hitsy, uh, mm. also getting in the top 8. And I think if we would uh, do better in not having our own own folks for the losing game, like we do not pen shots or we have a missed call, mostly we are losing because of that and not because the enemy was better playing, but today I think Endgame played better against us. I see. Uh, what do you think, uh, Blue? I mean, I mean, it's my first season in, in Raid, and um, as Nara said, the, the seeding is pretty difficult for us. Um, I mean, most of us like have 50k battles and never rerolled any account, and yeah, I mean, we don't care at all about the win rate, but the seeding is a hard point at that, but still, like, we had games losing against BPS and IW, and I mean, we could win those, but yeah, in the end, you can't always win against every clan, and the problem for our team is we had to win to join the top 8, but yeah, we will play a top 16 and yeah, hopefully it's gonna be great. Yeah, hopefully it will be great for you once again and hopefully you can win the entire thing. So, I mean, consider that you will be in the challenges to the minute. What will be your expectations? I mean, we don't know who's gonna change because uh, who's, who's gonna play because like some teams can still change around, mm -hmm. but um, I think top 4 is, an, is a possible aim for us. Definitely in the challenger tournament, and I mean last season. I don't know. Nara can say more about it. I mean they finished first, so yeah, I have a lot of hope to the challenger tournament. I also think it was uh, good because uh, now we have also uh, the guys who are played in, like the OG raids, like JP, etc., are also coming back mm -hmm. for Twister and Drizzles also getting back again. Right. So we have. Uh, 1v2 situation in his eyes, well, hopefully again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really want to see those old guys back. You know, Raid is a very, very strong. It has his, it has his uh, uh, very popular history in, in 
in the entire game, 2018. I mean, everyone can remember that if they follow Clan Wars. Um, if they are a fan of Clan Wars of this game. So I really hope to see them back for the the season. I really hope to see some exciting matches from you guys once again. I can't wait, basically. And I can't wait to commentate that team. <laughs> I mean, we also wait, can't wait, wait for it. We already talked about the Twister season. I mean, we want to prepare again really hard and then try our best for the Twister season this year. Really hope, so. really hope you guys would do well in the end. Um, and I wish you all the best for the rest of the season then. Thank you. Thanks. Great. Uh, so I was, I'll, I'll see you later then. Um, enjoy your evening, evening and bye for Thanks. Now. You too. See ya. Check. You too. See ya. So that was um narrow and blue in an inter interview for raid as they got knocked out by endgame hello peter hey jack how are you doing uh i'm doing fine and you um a bit sick but i mean able Your to sake. start the next game oh uh, i see that, that's a good uh, hearing that you're sick <laughs> not the sake from raid though but uh you know wait did um... you just say that's good <laughs> i didn't say that's good i say uh that's that's, that's not that's, that's not nice. I, that, uh, I think you. Sh I don't know if I said that, but maybe that's just Freudian <laughs> slip right there. All right. Regardless, um, I'm excited. I had two fantastic matchups, but let me uh, hear about yours first. Oh, uh, um, Ray just simply got outplayed by Endgame. Uh, but Rankum, it, it was a close one for the first two games. But I think the final, uh, the tiebreaker was just commanding performance by them. But they that was Ray, Rankum, right? Yeah, Rage vs. Rackham. Uh, first game, Rackham won that. Uh, presumably, I presumably I think that was... Uh, um, I don't know if it was uh, a, co a mistake in calling, or it was just a bad strategy right there, but uh, they got convincingly beaten uh, by, Rackham's, uh, by Rackham. And the second game, Rackham did something similar, but it happened like uh, when both teams have caps, and uh, it was Rackham that did the rotation, uh, both teams went to the corn, northeastern corner of the Yukon, trying to win the uh, position there, but both couldn't, and both lost because of trying to get hold of that corner uh, on Yukon, and then went down to Wintermine, North Korea, where Sig in that T22, although taking their first hit, spoiled up, Rackham attempting to cross into the uh, southwestern corner of Wintermine, North Korea, I got bled to death by the crossfire of raid. In particular, in particular, Pampachon crew getting perma tracked in that T125. Oops. <laughs> no. Well, if you talked about your round one since Adventure Tiebreaker, mine did as well, um, as you right. probably know. But um, it was very interesting. I must admit, Sparta putting up an amazing fight against APA. The first round was um, very standard beginning to Yukon. Mm -hmm. um, APA playing um, with a very unusual lineup though. Double mouse right. and double VKP is something you would expect on maybe Dynasties, but not on Yukon. Mm -hmm. um, at least I wouldn't. And um, holding those mouses back for very long, waiting, you know, what the other team does. Sparta had a T22 and a Vickers, so definitely a lot lighter. Mm -hmm. um, but the rest was pretty much the same, you know, some E5, some Crown Runs, the, the usual stuff. Right. And um, then it came down to a push into the A corner, as yes. I think most Yukon games end up being, mm -hmm. um, which APA actually won that engagement itself. Right. But um, the issue was they kept those Vickers and T22 alive mm -hmm. um, on the side of Sparta. Meaning, at the end of the fight, even though they were up like two or 3,000 hit points when it was a 2v2, a mouse even a double to begin with against the Vickers and uh, a T22 is not going to work. And Sparta played this really smart, playing with caps, driving around, stealing caps, stopping caps. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just fantastic how you how you should play the game, especially in tournaments, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so they just outplayed APA in that case. I think it might have also just been APA focusing the wrong target, so target priority was off. Mm -hmm. But the second game was... I don't want to say it was all RNG, but I think it put in a massive snowballing effect. Because um, APA was playing over the A side again, the usual, um, with B and then 
planning to push over on C. They had a normal lineup that time. And um, at that game, Sparta was actually doing something interesting. They held back two 50s, um, right. 50 Bs behind their B cap. They had a mouse there to just basically bait out APA over them by time, because that's the only way they could go. Since Sparta was capping B and then um, D. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, had their normal stuff, had double T22. And um, then APA started pushing. They wanted that B cap. Um, you know, getting over tank advantage. They got out the mouse, and then we yeah. saw Vabon, who was in a T22, pushing on um, their cap. No, wait. That was B. APA at the other spawn. And um, Yennefer, who was in an E100, saw that. So, of course, your main point is um, stop that B cap from, you know, getting any more points, drag attention of that E100 that they didn't know was there, but, you know, it would help in the later fight, since APA had already started pushing. But what happened is that Vabon got full HP armor wrecked. <laughs> oh no. So they lost an entire tank. They did not stop the B cap from happening. Yeah. And I think that uh, did a lot to their mental strength. Yes. And so um, they ended so. up they ended up losing more tanks around their own cap. And APA mm -hmm. just absolutely dominated. Oh dear. And when it went to Winter Mali, um, the start was actually really good for Sparta. Right. But they just messed up on focus fire and APA just waltzed over them, like fully. Mm. Um, I see, I see, I see. So um, I'm really happy with Sparta's performance as they mm -hmm. are underdog here. But they were just not able to perform that um, upset, I think, that they hoped for. Yeah, but they were very close and I think that was very unfortunate that ammo wrecked happened. Oh, definitely. I saw yeah. Stin and Vabon in my stream chat. They were not happy. <laughs> they were not happy at all. They were also complaining on my chat, so... Yeah. <laughs> on the other hand, I think uh, for Raid, just got outplayed by Endgame. Endgame was just better in both games. In the first game, uh, it was really down to Endgame being, showing their usual tech, um, skill dominance. Over uh, over rest of the teams. I mean, you know, Endgame. All of the individual players are amongst the best players in in, in the in the entire server, if not the game. Yeah. So trying to win again uh, in separate uh, separate brawls where numbers do not do not uh, vary that mm. much. Like pretty much the same for both Endgame raid uh, for different areas. Um, it's definitely going to be and it's going to be expected for Endgame to come out on top based based on their individual skills and mm -hmm. uh, that was the first game um, that Raid lost. I think the second game was just Endgame having more map patrol and uh, I believe Raid also lost too many hit points at the start and the double crown Vargans you know in that, in that slope near the windmill on the east side right mm -hmm. um, they try to hold down there but I think it was kind of a common position that a lot of teams take. But it didn't well, work out for Raid. I, I, I mean, they have good turret armor, but maybe Eni managed to find a way to pan the, uh, the chasse. And in the end, those Crown Vargans lost quite a lot of hit points. And um, compounding with other tanks losing hit points as well, that gave Eni a comfortable hit point pool lead to, buff, uh, to, to buffer and uh, to... And uh, and they just kind of um, did really well in also obtaining the A cap as well, trying to punish the STB one. Raid also was not in good positions trying to defend uh, bases, so I think it was just Endgame being more tactically strong and. Dominant. All right, I have twenty seconds. Um, so Raid he APA. The first game was amazing because yeah. it was basically just a, a camp out, um, yeah. but APA after some time managed to get A. Um, yeah. Reiti then became absolutely aggressive, killed tanks on A, uh, managed mm -hmm. to get to stole A, and then actually ended with the timer running out, but they won on points because they got another kill five seconds before it ended. And, well, we can't talk about the other games. <laughs> I mean, you can. I mean, before the match starts for us, I mean, Alpenstadt, Reti yeah. versus AF versus Endgame is going to be very exciting. Mm -hmm. But what do you think? Uh, I mean, the other games. Let's just round it up very quickly. All right. So the second game was a misjudge, a heavy misjudgment from Reiti, sending back tanks that shouldn't have been sent back, because APA pushed over the uh, C side very aggressively. Um, so that all ended up being a miscall, misjudgment, misreading of the strat, 
and AP just waltzed over them. And on Normandy, because it went to tiebreaker, Reti absolutely surprised APA with a push over the BC side so fast that not even I was able to catch it whilst they were already starting and just ran over them. Well, and I wish that, a I enjoy was that no worries. I wish Reti's going to, you know, give us more surprises in this game, and you know. <laughs> Peter's just trying to, you know, get out of this call very quickly. But we are seeing both teams with Reti going mostly to, you know, C area, trying to get spots up. Um, the Ardis were up um, last AFK in Optic 3 and C. It's going to be captured, oh my gosh, my mouse, by Vicky Kabadach. Kabadash. Kabadai. Any, uh, so any, uh, Harb, I need your help. Can, can someone call Har Harbomat for me, please? How do you pronounce this? Let me use that one free. Uh, please, please, please someone ping Harbomat for me. That would be really, really nice indeed. But that means Red Team will get a Catalyst now, Winchley trying to get A. As you see previously on, uh, with the leaderboard, Endgame is safe in the top 8 if they participate in the next previous skill tournament. So absolutely no, no pressure for Endgame at all, and even though they probably don't know about that, this news um, of Endgame safe in the top 8. But they still have a lot of points of cups, they know they have a lot of cops to get, uh, to, to, you know, to buffer, so absolutely for an Endgame. They can afford uh, to, you know, uh, not uh, get into the final day for one previous skill tournament. But anyway, let's not digress too much. Reti making a ca making a rotation back to their spawn. Uh, they probably potentially try to that windulate though. Is that a good call? This is a very audacious call by Vicky, and his and his T twenty twos is going to push. A lot of damage to Winchell. He's now down to one shot. Vicky can kill him off in no time. And he's killed by Vicky. Winchell is down. And the double T22s are held off by Endgame. And that would mean Red Team would need to do something on the other side before these T22s get out, uh, out, um, get exposed and out and farmed. You know, no pen, no life is not in a good position. Oh, they, they've made a tactical decision, a tactical retreat, actually. Brave, bold call right there, but even killing of Winchelay would not hand Red T the hit point pool advantage that they absolutely need to do something on the other side. And Red T has made a call to push both. I love CCB and Hollow Purple Endgame forces um, are quite isolated here. Charlie C is now very, very low. They need to kill off I love CCB. But it's going to be a matter of time before Vicky is now going to be killed three times, crowded into one. Uh, Charlie's scene is safe for now. No endgame tanks looking for that. And I look to see base trying his best to um to buy time as much as many as possible for endgame. Great shot from Carol into that uh, into Charlie's scene in the endgame. They still have some time left. Carol is still really healthy. I love Susie base still not dead yet, and he's finally dead. But look at that endgame. Rotation is finally there, and they are looking to get C as well. But this Max Spitzy, I think he might be doing the wrong move here. He's isolated, he's very, very low hit points still with Endgame. And and, and Endgame will be looking for C. This is still anyone's game five versus four at the point at this moment in time. Uh, the yard is looking for B. I think he's just going to ignore B downright, but they need at least one player to get into B and cap it out. But with Carol Aid, now the isolated tank, this is still really, really tanks. Spitty would love to run out of this situation here. This is not a situation he wants to be in. The no pen absolutely does not need to go into uh, to support these crown bargains. They need A, however. They're, they're, they are still up by caps, but not by much. Orange Tomato is coming from behind of Radicoso. He needs to put that big shell in, and he kills on Radicoso. Four versus two. Last AFK looking to put a shot into Orange Tomato, and no place going for A. This is still anyone's game, and last AFK looking to kill off Orange Tomato, and that would give um, uh, Red Seas. Now three versus two. Uh, oh dear, it's going to be Mission Impossible right here. Endgame can they pull it off? Uh, Pencil Case trying his best to stop Object Free from getting into B, but to no avail. Um, Endgame got 920 cap points. 
and if Panzer Case cannot survive um, and can pot pot potentially win this with the Adis coming in, he needs to get in to support Panzer Case here. Great shot to last AFK. But that, but that uh, kill would mean Angie will win this one. Unless up to three is dead. And last AFK timed it brilliantly. Oh my goodness me, that was a very, very tough loss for Rete. Wow. Um, Rete uh, did absolutely fantastically. I'm very, very sure that was... Rapti's game, very adamant about that, but Endgame was just simply uh, responding very well. I think both he's played this one really well. Rapti did not deserve to lose this, what I must say. Um, great idea, tactical retreat by the double T22s, shutting down Crom uh, Winchelet at the very start, um, and the rotating to shut down the two eyes little tanks. Unfortunately, WZ13 cannot catch up. But it doesn't matter because Endgame, that would distract Endgame. I mean, that would buy time for Red Team to push on the other side. And that was just brilliant gameplay from Red Team. But absolutely, Endgame made sure that uh, they got all their shells in. And great, great play by last AFK to hold on to his shell. And when the cap was taken into around 960, he puts his large shell in and kills off... Um, the one hit point tank of, I think it's Pansip case right there. Oh my goodness me, Rete. Um, you don't deserve to lose this one. I I think you really, really deserve to win that one. I hope this one, you're going to do very well. Everyone supporting you, I must say. Um, we want to see an underdog, um, you know, define the odds. I want more. Uh, I mean, this is just going to be epic, I must say, uh, absolutely epic, truly epic. Um, so far, Endgame won to Red Team, but absolutely Red Team, they are still not in the top 8 yet, but winning against Endgame would propel them into a top 8 for the first time this season. Um, Red Team on the south side, uh, Red Team on the south side, it's going to be Red, uh, Red Team for them, Endgame Blue Team, north side. I think this would either crush Red Team's mentality or, you know, um, provide or, 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 on the other hand, provide adrenaline for Red Team, you know, you never know. This kind of situation, Red Team was so, so close in that game. I must say, it was just epic. End game, Blue Team, no spawn, the last AFK. In that, the T20 spoiled up the Spitty, but Red Team couldn't spoil up any tanks though. T20 potentially could get trapped themselves around here. Not something that I'll be happy with, um, Red Team. Hmm, maybe they have an idea right here. Double Crown Vargas is spotted. Oh, will this work? Will this push work? Endgame just know that Carolay needs to run away as soon as possible and he's now down to half his damage and all the shots will be on to Carolay right now. Winchelay captured C but look at the hit was dropping so quickly as yes. Entropic um Entropic Affair just descended into Anarchy. Oh my goodness me, Red Sea, it seems to be backfiring, and it just responded to it perfectly. The focus fire of Red Sea now is dissolving right now, RD is now quite low, Panzer K is now down, the RD is now down to one shot. And the, the T20 needs to come in and save uh, the, the, the guns down there. Ooh, is that the other thing is a number rack, but Vicky is also down, it's now 4 versus 7, Red Sea. Valiant effort right there, but it wasn't going to happen because Angin was just simply uh, very responsive and uh, you know, Winchley in that scene, that T20 very mobile to rotate. And I mean, the uh, rest of Angin seem uh, look at their lineup, they they are taking very uh, relatively mobile heavies, you, you know, they're going to rotate sooner or later. Uh, or, I mean, they're they are, like behind A in somewhat, but Red C. That push didn't work. <laughs> Simply, I thought um, it could have uh, done a lot. I mean, it always 
had it all it almost did damage to to crown bar uh, to the double crown bargains right there but you know retty um the, the double crown bargains maybe they're experienced about uh, uh end games end game is very very experienced in getting rushed so they know what to do if that uh, that situation happens they are not flustered at all about that look at the t22 by end game double t22 border 3k done uh, 3k damage done four kills in total Ratty, uh, almost, almost. I love your idea, uh, but I think just um, I don't know if it's predictable because pretty much those tanks got sported. Um, and Endgame, you can also give credits to Endgame as well for being in the positions to you know sport off the potential push by Ratty. My goodness me, what has it come down to? <laughs> Oh gosh, it's now going to be end game 2-0 against Red Sea and they are through to the finals and they will be knowing soon it's either Serenity or Veil. They're still playing, of course. The second game happened so quickly, I don't think. E I, even if Serenity or Veil 2 0 against the other team, it's, it's not going to end that much quickly. Well, s we still have a lot of time. So that means we can analyze matches. So why why do we. Let's do that, shall we? Um, you know, let's actually analyze. Um, what game should we analyze? First game of Camp Thea from Raid. Define the odds. Okay, we're just going to set this up. Right there, we will go and analyze and raid. Versus air game, first game it is. Oh, is it uh, everyone's to talk with me? Okay, uh, just wait for me for a moment.
Ooh. Right, here we go. Do we have it? Oh gosh. Ah, right, yeah, we got it. We got it. Here we go, let's analyze this match. Best as well. Uh, and game score with Radicos and the Ice War as well. Uh, I mean, it's going to eat on my bandwidth, so I have to lower the quality. I apologize. Alley in Kron. Ooh, the T1 Teddy Vice crossing very uh, uh, crossing into the buildings here. Great, um, great shots into Winchelate here. I think Winchelate uh, didn't expect that to happen, and the T1 Teddy Vice are not. Uh, uh, it's really good. Oh, blue. Uh, this is an uh, interesting position. I always do this move in random battles because um, in this in, in this area here, you have these buildings that you can. Line up your shots to shut down whoever's in here. You got shots there, and you have a crossfire into there who is taking this this flank here. Um, very important, and also you got C well covered. So that is really that is some really good positions taken by the team with 25s. So good start to raid and end game. Um, they know they cannot get C, and Winchelay also lost so many hit points there. But uh, it's it, it's going to be hard for Endgame to get uh, make a comeback. Um, I mean to get more information with that because lights and he has to play it really really carefully. But let's continue to see uh, watch what's going to happen. Uh, a little bit careless, but it's minimal, not a lot of damage getting uh, shredded away. But you know, uh, it's not the best idea to lose hit points at this point. Uh, Triple T one thirty five, but last AFK Romka and Object Three Winchelade and that Vickers light actually raid. Is very separated, but this is to be expected on Cam Steer though, because Rain is looking to reset all three caps, and uh, the, you you can see from this lineup, they are not giving any uh, chances for an endgame to get into either cap. But endgame on the other hand is not giving chances on Raid and trying to get a cap here. So um, I I'm afraid to say though, um, anyone watching this stream, be prepared to endure a seven minutes a seven minutes of stalemate right here so while we are while we are living in this stalemate situation raid is dropping some hit points well at the moment i think uh tanks like og and yoni tastic should not lose hit points because uh they only two tanks here the uh, rest of the team they have two tanks behind them though which can be important but uh, in any case you don't want to lose hit points um uh, you want to make sure you have enough hit points so that you can make a push uh, in the end. And in, the, in a map like Camp Steel, and you know that none of the teams here will get a base, the hit points become very, very important. And uh, and also, you know, getting a cap could, could be very important. Let's continue. Not something that they would be happy about. And Endgame would be trying to make a push on Yoni Tostic and OG. I think that could be a good idea here because there are only two tanks and Endgame could outnumber them quite easily. On the other hand, Tamon in that Kramwagen in a very far away position, but look at Naro. Coming into support, OG and Yoni Tostic, I think they have a sixth sense right there. The sense, uh, that's good sensing right here. Ooh, um. Uh, this one, Brother Kosi probably got a little bit too ambitious right here. Uh, Ice Warden doesn't have good um backward uh, uh backward speed, so basically this is allowing Raid to put shots into Brother Koso and he would take some time to go away, uh, to go back. There are no near obstacles near Brother Koso, so he's going to take quite a lot of hits, particularly Naro. He has his full clip full clip right there he could potentially shed away loads of hit points of, of radicoso and that will give raid a lot of advantage to soak up on the other hand though four tanks over here but you know there is a gorilla somewhere this so it's four versus four in this situation so also endgame can't do anything much in this situation radicoso would lose some hit points if raid uh is staring no i think they they want uh, this is a good opportunity for raid to to get uh, to get more hit points to get a better hit point per lead. 
So let's continue. But on the other hand, these tanks may be able to punish OG if he got a little bit careless, but let's continue to watch. Radicals dropping hit points is going to attempt to capture A a bit, but no, doesn't think he's doing that. Drizzle and also um, Blue is trying to push out onto Object 3 here. I think action is happening. We are not going to see Stalemate gameplay. Radicosa is trying to get out of this um, quack by Rani Tastic. Put a good shell here. OG, I don't think he's able to put a, sh a finishing shell. Um, but this is. Oh, but I think now things are going to go a little bit south. These T 25s. Someone swore up Carolite, so he's going to be important, but it's potentially two versus th uh, three. Oh, I mean, two versus two. There is someone that's trying to capture C. That is going to be important, but if that's going to happen, I would say T125s don't go too aggressively in this situation. Hold a little bit, try to chip away more hit points of end game. You know, they will, they they will have the hit point pool advantage that they just need to approach this one bit by bit. And uh, while they gain more control over over over, over Camp Steer, the map. The gorilla can rotate and try to get into a better position so that uh, it could it could shoot tanks trying to um, to push T125. That's what I'm going to uh, suggest for raid actually. These T125 to hold somewhere around here, allow gorilla to get into position to get crossfire to support those T125s and hold it out potentially. Um, the, this side can soak up more damage because you know uh, they have done really well to chip away hit points of Radico, so and also ventilate is also somewhat low, so you know nothing much uh, that the end game end game could do at this point apart from rushing into these tanks. Uh, but they could absolutely drop down to the nearby river there and allow the heavy tanks, you know, while they're holding go to this area and support and flank and surround the endgame's tanks out while the gorilla can go back and support those tanks trying to rush onto these tanks so I think this is pretty much raids game to lose at this point um, I would say but endgame absolutely they can try to capitalize on the T-125s they go too aggressively they can absolutely punish with eventually coming into support so let's continue is really close to call. Darrow would want to reload his clip though, but at the on the other hand, Blue and Drizzle is looking to shut down Object 3. He's dropping reactive armor that's going to be ported, but one versus two. Can Object 3 survive though? I'm not sure. But you have Winchelade sniping from behind. Carolade coming. Uh, that's good reaction from Endgame. They know potentially raids forces are very spread up, so they are trying to shut down T 25s now they don't have a lot of hit points though so even dropping the reactive armor probably would not buy too much time for ray to do action to make uh, to do to, to do to have any action on the other side but maybe it's time for ray to make a move right there as well and while there is another tank near c so maybe it's supporting the t 25s might be a good idea but we will see out on, uh, uh, coming up uh, coming through this um uh, berm right here let's take raid I'm not sure about these uh, double T one twenty five C. It's now going to be two for those two Carolay coming in to shut down these two T one twenty five. It's going to be a turning point for the end game, I would say. The focus, and uh, here we are seeing two versus two right here, one versus one right here. Sick is not in, in, in the battle pretty much, you know. So and then you have three versus. I think I love the ZB and the Ice will be in some sort of trouble. And I think Ray needs to push in this situation, but uh, getting yourself into two brawl, two brawls is not a good idea, particularly when Endgame has more hit points and at last AF does have more hit points. Um, that will spell trouble for Ray, uh, particularly Taron is well, it's, uh, particularly Sek is not in position at all. From Endgame, they're focusing Raid Blue at this point, and Blue is now killed. With last AFK trying to go for um, Taman here, one for this one. These kind of brawls be very, very important to end game success here. This is still really close, to but I love Susie Bay will be looking to drop uh, off this uh, situation because 
He's dropping reactive armor and he's a medium tank. He does not want to get shot uh, as well. And with double T-125s now killed a bit, I think a bit too ambitious right here. I think Terman is going to go down sooner or later. Great shot into last AFK by Sick. On top of here, we just missed that actually. Terman's now killed, it's now 4 for the 6. Hit points are in favor of Endgame. At this point, really losing these two pros, two bros. Despite uh, Yanni Tarsing and Naru and also Oruji did a did the right move to be aggressive right there and try to kill off Radicoso and even I love Susie Bay or Chocolate. It's not going to be enough. Um, I think really allowing yourself to be in two brawls without any numerical advantage at all and under a hit point disadvantage as well. Uh, it's definitely not going to work. So end game read it well, uh, reading that situation, really responded when Raid made a mistake right there, and this is what Endgame is good at, punishing the mistakes of the other team. Despite really at the start, I thought Endgame was in terrible situation. Ray, uh, Endgame did a good comeback right here. So that, uh, in the uh, and at the end, it's pretty obvious that uh, Endgame is going to win that. Um, so I'm not going to show you the rest of the three minutes here. Uh, so unless like Endgame goes. Uh, Gets isolated one by one, and it's not what you want to be doing. Um, we don't have a lot of time to analyze the rest of the match, so actually, let's go back. I'm getting paint on my server. Did someone just pain me? Alright, so let's look at the results of uh, Serenity versus Vale who won that one. It's going to be Serenity winning against Vale 2-0 and they will be playing against Endgame in the finals. Red Team versus Vale, do we have results already? Vale won Red Team 2-0. Red Team would not be getting the third place tonight, so... Um, that means top 8 uh, record is still safe for now. And the Veil actually might be putting themselves in a good situation to get uh, to snatch a top 8 spot in the end, but that's going to be very, very difficult. Uh, because in terms, of, uh, in, uh, in terms of the number of cups, um, and we will show you soon. In terms of the number of cups, Vale is now 1,300 uh, cups behind, uh, for about 1,400 cups behind. They need to hope any clan in the top 8 to trip up, uh, not qualify the next day. They have to hope that happens, and also they have to, you know, qualify it in the next day. Otherwise, I think, I think, um, Vale mm, is probably up. <laughs> Uh, but Retsy, just around uh, 100 cups short, so just a slight, uh, just one stage ahead of Reckon would do the job. Uh, unless you're talking about uh, advancing, uh, 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 unless you're talking about the stage between the round of 32 and round of 16 in the final stage, that's a different story. But other than that, just one stage ahead of Reckon in, on the final day would mean they will overtake Reckon. A1M1 is in touching distance to gain top 8, I would say, unless, um, unless, um, the, uh, they get through, they get fewer, fewer cups than either Reckham or Reti, uh, by, uh, around two stages, I would say. Um, but, and, at, at the moment, endgame, 
first first place in the leaderboard through 2,666 cups. So only two minutes left, so we don't have a lot of time. I'm just going to change the overlay, and hopefully we get more viewers back soon. And then game is on the red team with Serenity on the blue team. Come on. Alright. Hopefully, we are now on Port Bay. I'm still changing the overlay. So bear with me about uh, on that. Okay, end game on Port Bay. They're going with Double Crab Vargans by Hollow Purple or Nicolade and Carolade. Double T20 by Last AFK and Winchley. Robinka Ice for Double T125 by Love to See Bay and Object 3 Serenity. Ooh, double T60 by Platinium and Spitfires. You know, uh, take a close look on Spitfires. You can literally change the entire game and, you know, lead a team to victory under a terrible advantage. But quadruple Crown Vargans by Flytix, Devil, Jail, and Alpha. Days in the T125. With that many held down tanks, I expect them to go C. I mean, it's. It will make little sense to go A and B with little terrain there. <laughs> and you know, I don't think T60 can size rip. I don't know, just prove me wrong about that, but end game. Also taking quite a lot of how down tanks, but that wrong could in the ice wall could potentially go B. Uh double T22 will be looking to secure that northeastern corner. Um So with Serenity with no medium tanks, this could be a disadvantage for them. Hello, Farman. Um, and please tell me the serenity. Uh, what is going on? Um, serenity. Oh my gosh, they have three cr uh, tanks crashing. Room lag. Um, serenity has is having some very terrible issues. Devil and Alpha still not loaded in. Oh dear. Serenity um, is crippled a little bit by. Um, held back by bugs. That gave uh, Endgame a free cap there. Serenity would not be happy about that, but that doesn't matter because both teams are currently in the first and second place on the leaderboard. Uh, so Serenity. Just like you really, really aggressive. On the other hand, Alpha and People Devil are very far back, so I'm not sure if Serenity has done the has 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 uh, done the right call, uh, made the right call to go really aggressive without those crown bargains right there. Alpha is now close, but People Devil is still very far behind. Great shot into Romka right here, but two caps through end game. They just need to hold. They don't have hit points though. They are down by around one thousand uh, hit points. Days is going to put shell into I don't know if Bay. Lucky not to get sh uh, shot more. Alpha getting shot twice. Bang game. Serenity losing some hit points here. They, they want to get C. People just going to get C's unsported because Serenity held their line up very aggressively. So People Jail might not get punished for trying to cap C though. But on the other hand, People Devil. 1 versus 1 against Winchelay. Who is going to win? I mean. Let's head down here for a second here. People Devil against Winchelade. One for this one. Oh. Great idea by Winchelade. People Devil. Is trying to run away. 
A great show. Look at the DPM of Winchley. Oh, people devil bounce that show. And Winchley as well. Um People devil. Bobby is in loads of trouble. Base is coming to su uh, to support devil here. That means on the other side, Serenity needs to hold their ground. Winchley is trying to run away. He knows he can't do one versus two in this situation. I love Susie Base now down to one shot. Um he is killed. Romkus, the isolate attack for Serenity, they have made a great call to isolate and uh, kill off Romka right here. Alpha missing their shell. Hit points are firmly in favor of Serenity right here, but the cap caps are not in favor of Serenity at all. Um, we still have Winchelade still alive. It's now 1 versus 1 for Daze, and Winchelade, Daze still has a lot of hit points. The last AFK is trying to reset B as much as he could. A daisy spotted. He's out of the game. Carole is killed. And we are still seeing some tense, tense match uh, out here. Alpha and also people, uh, Platinum, still very low. Chaos could be very important here for Endgame to win this outright. Romka is going through C. Important stuff here, but Platinum, great shot into Object 3. That, that would mean Flashing is going to kill off uh, Object 3. And last AFK is killed. Important kill right here. It's now two versus four right here. And Flytex is going to do one versus two. He needs to stay safe as long as he could. But Angie needs to kill off Flytex as, as quickly as they need to. Uh, because, you know, Flytex is now going to get his full clip here. He's going to put some shells into Hollow Purple. And Hollow Purple kills off Flytex. Two caps. Well, is it enough for Serenity to win this one? They need to get a tank out of this game. But People Devil is a one shot. Romka needs to land a killing shell into People Devil. And Hollow Purple did exactly that. Meaning Endgame will win the first one. Once again. Similar situation as Red T. They don't deserve to lose that one. And uh, Serenity did really, really well. The other side held off in a numerical disadvantage. Um, People Devil. Um, that brawl against uh, Winchelay is left is left to be decided. A lot left to be decided, but that doesn't matter because his team teammates have made the right call to support him. And Day's very healthy that he's team 25, and that's the problem of not taking a medium tank at all. Because basically, when Day's killed off Winchelay, he's pretty much out of the game, <laughs> and he has to spend quite a long time. Uh, to go back into get back to battle, but at the at the same time he can go and capture bases. So he did and captured A, and uh, that temporarily gave Endgame some scare uh, in the caps. But they got C in the end, killed off tanks in the end, which was so important. And it's going to be Serenity against Endgame still. Serenity quadruple crown bargains by people Dave of Flytex, people Dog, and people Gel, uh, Platinum. In the 260 alongside Spitfire, stays in the T125. Endgame, double crown bargains by Hollow Purple, Carol Aid. Last AFK in the T22, Ronka, WZ113, Winchlade, E100, I Love Suzy Bay, and Optic 3 in double T125s. Hello, Daba, how are you doing? So it's now 1 0 to Endgame. And uh, despite uh, the hard work from Serenity, they couldn't quite convert uh, that result into a win it was very close in the end I believe Serenity have uh, have they uh, had they you know spawned uh, earlier or didn't get uh, hit by the bug at the start maybe things could have been a lot different maybe they would have a lot more control of the situation and that is not their fault that they gave Endgame the cap lead, to be honest with you. Yeah, things like this happened. Ha things like this happen from time to time. And it's Wargaming server, obviously. <laughs> so, Endgame, Red Team South Spawn, Blue Team Serenity, North Spawn. The Object 260 is a bad tank. I heard a lot of people saying the Object 260 is a bad tank. Um, but it has a good gun. And um, maybe you shouldn't play it like a heavy tank. Maybe more like an IS-8. I don't know. Maybe it would work very well. So we will see Serenity not taking uh, any medium tank again. 
Will that come and bite them? Serenity this time, they don't have any problems with the late spawn. Last day AFK spawned up Spitfires, that's going to be important. Serenity will take hold of the corner here, but they will not spawn up any tanks of Endgame actually. Uh, a is going to be captured by Endgame by quite a bit. People dog in that crumb bargain. Days, great shot there to reset A. Oh, some goose shell going into people dog. And he will be rushed. I'm not sure if Serenity can handle this. They have tanks very far away from people dog and days. Can they cope with the onslaught of Endgame right here? He's dropping their speed boost. He's trying to pull back as much as he could temporarily in safe position, but that would not last for long. Days is also. Retreating, dropping the reactive armor. Um, not going to put a shell into wrong. The hit points are now in favor of Endgame, and uh, Serenity is able to hold Endgame back for a little bit. Flytics took a big hit right here. On the other hand, T22 flanked from behind, and attention has turned to Last AFK. He needs to run away from this situation. Platinum and Spitfires is really looking for Last AFK. Great shot into Last AFK right here, but Serenity, I don't know if they have made a right call to push onto these tanks here. And hit points are now firmly in favor of Endgame right here. Big shot into Vitex from uh, Winchley that it's E100. And this is going to be Endgame's game probably. Last AFK now dead with Polo Purple getting eviscerated. Uh, by Spitfires. Great shot there. Flytix is now killed. It's now 5 versus 5. People Devil also down. I love to see Bane is going to go down very quick. Killed by Spitfires. Daze is dropping the reactive armor at the right time. That could be very important indeed. Um, soaked up a lot of damage from Winchelate. Will that change matters? Though, I don't know. Endgame has more than 3k, 3,000 hit points of advantage. Object 3 is on um, an Amorak. That means his reload time is going to be really low. The Winchell is now down to one shot. Optic 3 is dropping the speed boost, trying to shut down. Optic 3 is on fire. Peep, uh, Platinum is killed. Serenity is throwing um, as many as they could to try and salvage this game, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Carolate is going to put his full clip into Spitfires. Rob coming in that 1 1 3 is going to shut down Spitfires. Spitfires. Can he do this? Do the impossible? I don't think so. Um, Winchelade and Object 3 killed off uh, People Devil, is it? And here we go. Serenity. Puts a good shout to Carolate, but I don't think that's going to be enough for Serenity to win this one. Romka will be killing off um, Spitfires. No, it's going to be Romka killing off Spitfires. Endgame 2 0 against Serenity and they will win this fifth proof of skill tournament. And here we go. End game. Tonight is very dom dominant here. Five tanks doing more than 2k. Serenity, Spitfires, three kills doing more than 3k. But it's not enough, obviously. Um, end game. Made a good push into those Crown Vargas, forced them to pull back. As much as they could, but it's uh, but Serenity, the uh, the other tanks are very far away from the rest of the teams. The, the disconnect um, was spotted was was spot on. Uh, I mean, was spotted by Endgame pretty nicely, and they punished Serenity for that. And that is always the case. Um, uh, that is always a sign of a very very strong team, very dominant team, and Endgame proved exactly that so well done to, to end game and they are very sure that they will be securing a spot in the professionals tournament and serenity they still have to fight for the final previous skill tournament and hope for the best they don't get pegged against a very uh, against a top eight team
so this is the leaderboard uh, tonight. Um, end game. First place with 33,080 cups. Serenity 31,048 cups. They are ahead of the ninth place by around 3,000, uh, by around 4,000 cups. That's going to be very important if they lose out in the set of the second day of the final proof of skill tournament. It's not going to hurt them too much. Um, I don't think any team below uh, be uh, below the top eight will be able to overtake Serenity, and I mean rest of the I mean the all the teams below Serenity they have to overtake. Uh, the eight teams below Serenity have to uh, seven teams below Serenity have to overtake. Uh, have to. Uh, uh, have to overtake Serenity. I don't think that would be possible. So Serenity, if they do not qualify for tomorrow's, uh, for the second day of the second from the skill tournaments, not the end of the world. I think they are very safe in the top eight. I'm, I think. Actually, are they through? Um, let's see. Okay, so actually Serenity is through to the professional student, provided that they participate and at least play a game in the previous skill student. And otherwise, if we uh, if we actually assume that uh, Eggy would not participate in the final previous skill tournament. They still, they cannot, uh, they will not be, uh, they will not be safe in the top eight just yet. So at least, at the very least, Endgame needs to participate and play in at least one game in the previous skill to, in the final previous skill to the mint. Okay, so, so that leaves um, the other. Six, uh, six, position, uh, six positions up for grabs. So far, the top eight will be Endgame, Serenity, Loka, BP, uh, two BBS teams, APA, A1M1, and Rackham. However, the third placing team, that is Loka, um, is only around a thousand cups away uh, from Red Tea. And Red Tea, if Red Tea did, does really well, in the final premium skill tournament, they could absolutely overtake any team above. Um, hope and we have to hope and we have to hope, uh, we have to wish. Uh, so I mean, any team would not. Uh, I mean, any team here in the top eight um, would cannot afford to lose out on the second day, basically. And we know it's very likely that teams here. To be faced with one another, but I, I think it. Uh, I think Retty might be able to capitalize on this and get into top eight in the end. But you will never know. To be honest with you. So I am very, very terrified that either Loka, BPS, or uh, either, uh, BPS or the other BPS. We'll miss out the top eight because of the seeding, and let's hope that would not happen. Because all of these teams in the all of these teams in the top five, they they thoroughly deserve to be in the top eight. So let's hope that won't happen in the end. But you will never know if it's going to happen. Uh, on the other hand, Sanus is not going to be getting top eight. It's definitely out of the equation. Teams like IW, Shadow Raid, Sparta Cash, Veil vale still has a chance, but it's going to be very unlikely. Um, so we will see what's going to happen. But I really, really think that the I I think it's going to be really slim. The chances in the top eight. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed my stream, and I will be following uh, the. The sixth proof of skill tournament, and hopefully I would, um, you know, put a lot more effort 
for the professionals tournament and I'll be following all three servers EU, Asia and NA server I'll be back on the NA server so uh, uh, for the professionals tournament we will see about the stream uh, uh, I mean the, the allocation of streams but if it's going to be more than four streamers streaming the professionals tournament I might go and stream challenges tournament instead but we will find out soon um, actually so until then, I will see you next time, and thank you all for watching. Catch you all, uh, catch you all on Friday. Uh, bye for now.